Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. This project is starting out with an old book. I'm going to cut out some of the pages. And while this isn't exactly inspired by Instagram, it is inspired by just using rustic and natural materials to create spring and Easter projects. So I'm just taking my box cutter. I'm going to cut down really heavily and then just peel off some of the pages. I think I used about 30 pages for this. I cut out a shape that is half of a carrot with some cardboard and now I'm going to just fold a bunch of these sheets in half. I think I did about five at a time and I'm going to trace out the half carrot onto there and then of course I'm just going to cut it out and it's going to create a whole size carrot. For those of you who have been watching me faithfully, you'll remember that I keep forgetting to pick up glue sticks, but I finally remembered the last time I was at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue the sides together. So glue on one side and then press it together and then just continue on until I have all of these pieces glued together. It sort of ends up in a bit of a stack. After I had about 10 sheets glued together, I set those aside and then started with a new one. And then I'm going to glue those together. I just found that it was getting a little too thick. These are my last two stacks. So again, just the glue stick to make sure that it's really covered well because I'm putting a thicker stack on instead of just one sheet of paper. And I'll just hold it together and press it down and make sure that it's really stuck. Then put glue on the last page and then open it up and glue the first page to the last page and you've got a really pretty fluffy carrot. I tied some greenery together and there is a little bit of a hole in the center so I'm going to just take that and pop it in with some hot glue and kind of squish it together so it all stays in place just with these two little stems here and I do have some twine hanging down I made myself a little twine ribbon I'm going to add that to this and then it's done I think it turned out super cute For this project, I'm going to be using this wood panel that I've had. I've repurposed it many times and I'm going to do it one more time. And it's probably going to get something down the road again. Just using the glue stick, I'm taking a piece of the book pages and I'm going to glue that right in the center. Now I trimmed mine down on the sides and I shouldn't have. So if you're going to do this project, make sure that you cover everything on the bottom. If it would have just been a natural wood color or if I would have painted it white or or a creamy white I wouldn't have had to worry about that but you end up seeing some of that at the end and I'll show you what I do to fix it anyway let's just glue this guy down and then get to the next step I didn't want to throw out all of these cut carrot book pages so I'm going to do something with this one I'm using some burnt umber and I'm just getting some of the excess off and I'm going to just very lightly start dry brushing on the page. Now I did end up getting a big blob in one area and you'll see that in a second. So there it is. So I had to go a little bit darker but that's okay because it turned out really nice even the, with the dark. You still see some of the text coming through and that was my idea for this anyway. Now I'm going to use the glue stick and just put it around the outside edges where the paper is going to be stuck down. So I'll just take the book page then and place it right on top and you get this beautiful outline of a rustic carrot. And I was so excited when I laid this down. It just looks so pretty. 
You could also do this with orange if you wanted to or any other color to create the carrot that you want to have on your sign. Instead of using greenery, I decided to grab these little twigs that I have left over and I'm going to just glue them and make that sort of spray at the top of the carrot. So cute. I really like how this is turning out. I've got some more branches and I've just kind of cut them down to the sizes that I want, a longer one and a shorter one, and I'm gonna decorate the bottom corner of this frame. Now I love how it looks just like this, but you guys know me, I've got to add all my tiny little details. So I'm taking a little chunk of Spanish moss and I decided here that the chunk I had was still too big. I'm just gonna crumple it up and hot glue it to the bottom of the little sticks there where they meet the carrot. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other little hunk of Spanish moss and I'm gonna put that into the left corner on top of the sticks. Finally, I did decide to add a little bit of greenery, just a few leaves in the bottom corner and a couple on the top of the carrot. These are something that I got at the Dollar Tree. They're from the little blueberry picks and the colors are really dark and muted. I didn't want any bright greenery on this because I wanted to keep with more of the rustic look. It's probably difficult for you to notice, but I am still seeing some of that dark paint coming through on the sides because I cut my bottom sheet of book page too short. So I'm adding some strips of book pages that I cut down straight on one side and then tore on the other just enough to cover it up. And I just think it adds a little something extra to this project. This DIY is definitely an inspired from Instagram. They had done this in with a much larger wood slice. I only had these smaller ones. I did get these from Amazon a couple of years ago, and I will have some in my Amazon store if you're interested in getting some. But most of the time I get my wood slices from my cottage and I get my hubby to just cut them down for me. I'm going to be creating four holes using a small drill bit, north, south, east, and west. I have four twigs that are about the same length and the same size in the width. So I'm just using a bit of hot glue and I'm just going to push them down into the holes. I do have a piece of parchment paper underneath just in case the hot glue goes all the way through. You can see that this first twig is naturally bending in towards the center. So I'm going to make sure that they all do that because that's exactly what I want them to do. I'm going to add some twine where all of the twigs naturally come together and then I'll trim off any of the excess branches at the top. Since the two twine tails were hanging down, I kind of glued them in such a way onto the branches that they kind of looked like they were naturally cascading. And then I decided to add two more so there would be four pieces hanging down. I'm adding a tiny little ball of Spanish moss to the very top and I'm going to accent that with a tiny little flower. I did the same thing on the one corner at the very bottom and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to put in the center of this but then I just kind of looked around my craft room and decided to grab some of these rubber leaves that I've had and I'm just going to put them in sort of a semicircle towards the one angle. I'm going to add a magnolia flower into it and I think this is just so simple, rustic and really pretty. 
I hope you like this project. Let me know if you think you might try this too. I got these rubber tree stems from Michael's last year when they were on clearance and they just look so pretty. I know they're not the right shape for magnolia flowers, but I thought because they were so nice and thick, they would fit just perfect. I've seen magnolia blossoms at dollar stores, so be on the lookout for those when you're out shopping. For this project, I'm using two styrofoam eggs. One is the smaller one that you see there, and the other one is the one I'm working on now. It is just a regular sized egg, but it does have this plastic coating on the outside. It's just really easy to roll it, crack it, and I'll be able to peel it off just like a regular hard boiled egg. Now here I switched to one of the wooden apples you can get from the Dollar Tree simply because I liked the shape of it better and it was going to work better for this project than the egg. I angled the large egg down a little bit and then I put the bead on top. So you have to imagine that this is the body of a bird because that's what I'm doing. I'm going to take some of the twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap this styrofoam egg and wooden apple completely. They're going to get really nice and chunky and I'm going to be using some hot glue just to make sure that all of the twine stays in place as I'm wrapping it around. It gets a little tricky in a couple of spots but I think I made it work pretty good. As I was editing this portion of this video and this project, I really started to stumble over my words as to how to describe what I'm doing. So I've decided to just let you watch what I'm doing and you'll be able to see how I just turn the egg and wrap it around different ways to make sure I get everything covered. So now that I have my chunky little bird body all set, I'm going to give him a little perch to sit on. I found this little piece of birch that comes from a pack from the Dollar Tree. It was in my stash. And I've got some of these little branches that I just grabbed from outside off of my bushes and trees. I'm going to glue those on just how a bird normally sits on the end of a tree, just with this little perch. And I thought it would be really cute to have it done this way. Of course, it wouldn't be a perched bird without a little bit of a nest on it. So I'm grabbing some Spanish moss and I'm just going to set it right down on top. I am using my silicone spatula here a lot more often now simply because I'm tired of burning my fingers with that hot glue. For the bird's beak, I simply grabbed a little twig. I cut the ends off in a bit of an angle so it would look like it's pointed and I'm just hot gluing it right onto his little face. Now for some hot glue on the Spanish moss so I can glue the bird down onto his perch. He also needs a tail, so I'm taking some smaller pieces of stick and I'm going to glue them onto his little bottom and I'm going to give him sort of a really rustic looking type of tail. I thought this would be really fun. It's very similar to what I did with the carrot, just some smaller pieces of wood just trimmed and then placed in such a way that it looks like a tail. Then I thought it might be fun to add a little outline of a wing. So I took another little piece of branch and I just kind of bent it at the corner and I'm going to glue it on so it looks like a little wing. I'll do the same for the other side. With projects like these, it's always the little details that make them unique. I like to add little leaves and flowers and just little bits and pieces of things 
on these small projects like this. It just makes them your own and it just brings out a lot of fun and whimsy and I really just love doing this kind of stuff. This last project is using this styrofoam bunny. And I know a bunch of you are going to say, please don't cut towards yourself, but there just wasn't any other way that I could do this to make sure I had control. I'm also going to be just trimming out a little bit in between here because I want to be able to see his front feet separated and not together like a, a chunk like this. I'm going to just clean everything up really nicely so it's smooth. And then I'll move on to what I'm going to be doing with him. I want to give this bunny more of a textured look. I don't like the look of the styrofoam and I didn't just want to paint it outright. I've done so much with the baking soda and the texture paint. I just wanted to do something a little different. But unfortunately, the spackle that I have here is pretty dry. It was down towards the bottom and I ended up having to quit partway through and switch over to some wood filler, which was also kind of difficult to put on. But I am end up just covering the bunny with one thin layer and just smoothing it out as I go. While I wait for the bunny to dry, I'm taking some lengths of wire and I'm going to be using these tiny little wooden beads and I'm going to string them onto the wire so I can bend them and shape them into a bunny ear. And if you can see, there's one already sitting there that's already made. I used a total of 13 little beads for these ears. Once I had all the beads on, then all I did was take the wire, hold the beads really tight to the top portion of it, take one wire and then just twist it around so they would be nice and snug. Here's my bunny, he's dry. He's yellow now because I did have to use the wood filler and I'm going to give him a couple of coats of this paint. It's just a latex paint that I've used in my house before. I know a ton of you love this color, sort of a cross between a beige and a gray. It's really beautiful. Now, I haven't been able to find this exact color, but I do have a bunch of different options available in my Amazon store. I found a bunch of different brands of paint and types of paint that have similar colors. So you'll just need to go there and check them out. I'm taking some of the stain that I have pre-mixed in a bottle and I just want to make sure that all of the grooves of this bunny sort of look like they've been dirtied up and maybe have a little bit of an antiquing wax in it, but I don't have an antiquing wax. So I thought I'm just gonna use this stain and then I'm taking a dry brush and just wiping some of it back. And that actually turned out pretty good. I'm gonna do the same on both sides and everywhere there's a crease, the bunny is gonna get a little bit of dirt. I have these cedar balls that don't have any holes in them. So I had to use the Dollar Tree's little poking tool and I just kind of pushed it in a little bit so I could get the wire glued in there and I'm gonna add this as my bunny's tail. With his ears, I'm using the same tool here. I'm poking a hole in the top of his head and using the excess wire, I'm just going to give it a push and it is going to stay in there. I do add a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that he is going to stay in place, but you really don't need to do that. I'm sorry that you can't see the actual ears that I'm putting in, but you'll see it shortly.
Then I decided that I wanted to give my bunny some eyes. I ended up making them too small and I didn't notice it here. But when I was taking the pictures towards the end, I kind of noticed that he sort of looked like a rat. So I decided to then make his eyes a little bit bigger. So I'll be showing you that in the final photos. you enjoyed my projects today and got some inspiration to do some crafting for your own home. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Here's a couple more videos that might interest you too. Bye for now. Bye.